welcome to my YouTube channel and the next stop on the 10 Arty Questions YouTube Hop. My name is Nicole Watson and I am a mixed media artist living in the Austin, Texas area. If you are new to my channel, welcome! I hope you subscribe and stick around. I hope you get to know me a little bit more in this video and then explore some of the other tutorials that I have. If you are one of my regulars, welcome! I hope that you truly enjoy getting to know more about me in this long, longer than planned video. Since we are answering 10 different questions, I decided to have 10 different ways to create collage papers, or should I say 10 plus, because each way turned into different ways. Before we get into my video, I'd like to thank Nina and Hope for organizing this YouTube hop. I have been craving one for a while and it is so much fun to be involved in one. So if you've been watching the video, I am lightly gessoing a bunch of vintage book pages and ledger pages that I am going to create collage papers with. Basically, I just dribble a little gesso on, add some water, and spread away. It's not a perfect process, but this allows the papers to have a little bit more integrity, and I love the way white gesso looks on old book pages. So I'm not going to talk about the actual creating, I'm just going to answer questions. I hope that you can watch and be inspired to make your own. I actually encourage you to grab some papers and make some marks as you listen. Maybe listen to this like a podcast with some fun things to watch as you listen. Each question will have a new way or an expanded way on the one before of creating collage papers. I actually had to rearrange the questions to fit the length of my collage making segments. So that'll be a little different than everybody else's videos. So the, the supplies for each um, segment are listed below with the exact ish ingredients. I lifted them up as I was working, but they were a little blurry. So I did list them below. Feel free to ask any questions since I'm not really explaining what I'm doing. Hopefully the video is um, explanatory enough. However, I do have a member section on my YouTube channel. I have a few videos there. If you want to join as a member, um, I'm thinking I'm going to add these to the membership section with additional voiceovers. I haven't 100% decided that, but I might be, so watch for that. So with that, look at all these amazing gessoed papers that we are going to create collage work on. I hope you'll join me and create a bunch of collage papers, but if not, enjoy learning a little bit more about me. Fair warning, I'm not usually a crier, but there may be a couple tears involved. So with that, I'm going to start off with question number nine. What are my favorite types of journals to work in and why? I don't know that I have a necessarily a favorite brand of journal to work in. However, my favorite types would be ones that have mixed media paper in them that is um, really heavyweight that can take a lot of my layers. I love to layer on my pages. I also like them to be um, lay flat journals, ones that don't have spirals because oftentimes I like to create two page spreads and that's so much easier to do when there's no spiral in between those spreads. A couple brands that I have found that kind of meet this criteria are the Delusions Journals and also the Stillman and Burn Journals. They're both really similar. The Delusions Journals have creamier paper in them and the Stillman and Burn Journals have whiter paper in them, which is kind of fun to have those two differences. However, when you just it over the, the pages anyway, that part doesn't really matter, but they both lay flat and um, Stillman and Burn has several different versions, several different like types of paper inside. I like the ones with the blue covers on them. However, I also haven't experimented with all of theirs, so I do need to do that. I am always looking for a good mixed media journal, so if you have a recommendation along those lines, you can pop those below. I'd love to hear them. Also, I have dreams of making some of my own junk journals, doing some more book binding. I also have a couple smaller ledgers that I'm wanting to journal in. I'm just trying to um, muster up that brave in me <laughs> to be able to create in those ledgers and those old books. Now that I have a couple of them, I feel a little bit more safe um, playing in one since I have one to, to fall back on. But yes, um, mixed media journals, heavyweight paper. I really, really want to create some of my own and also um, create in some ledgers. And lay flat, no spirals, that's basically it. 
On a side note though, I do love a good watercolor journal. Um, my favorite thing to do when we do our beach trips or go to the coffee shop is grab a journal. And I do like a spiral for a watercolor journal because on my lap at the beach or in a coffee shop, it's easier to flip that cover over and only have one page to create on. Oh, I forgot. I do love a good moleskin journal as well. Question number two, if I could only have five art supplies, what five would I choose? Oh my goodness. Seriously, how do you choose only five art supplies, especially if you're a mixed media artist? I mean, after all, isn't mixing and using tons of different kind, types of art supplies and medias our like, thing we do? However, <laughs> since I have to answer this question, if you're one of my regular followers or have been following me for a while, I bet you can guess in your head what at least two or three of them are, maybe even the five. It's no secret, some of the supplies I love the most. So number one would be gesso, especially white gesso. Um, I love prepping pages, I love prepping like these um, collage papers that I'm using with it. I love using it for white paint, I love how it mingles on old papers as I've mentioned several times. Um, it just has so many purposes. I like um, pushing back layers with it, creating white space with it. it is probably one of the most important tools in my mixed media toolbox. So if I'm allowed to cheat, can I say acrylic paint as a supply or do I have to sp pick a specific one? If so, acrylic paint, specifically golden so flat paint is my favorite acrylic paint. If I have to pick a specific color, you guessed it, Payne's Gray. I can't live without Payne's Gray. I just love the moodiness of it, the darkness of it. I love adding white to lighten it up. You can add black to make it more black. It is just probably my favorite paint color. So acrylic paint, specifically so flat. And if I have to choose a color, if you're gonna make me do it, Payne's Gray. You're gonna see me use Payne's Gray coming up along with number three, which is Walnut Ink. I have fallen in love with Walnut Ink. It is a fun way to distress papers, to add an additional layer, to add some darkness, some moodiness to my pages. These have um, Walnut Ink on from um, another company and I'm gonna use the Daniel Smith coming up. I'll have everything linked below, like I said, but yes, definitely Walnut Ink. The next one would be paintbrushes. I cannot live without paintbrushes. Specifically, I like rounds two, four, and six numbers are probably my favorites. I love the Simply Simmons brushes. They're what I'm using in mostly all of these um, collage papers. I do use another one. It's a teal brush. I'll have to link that below if it's still available. However, yes, paintbrushes, I have to have them. Round numbers two, four, and six, I go through them like crazy and they're very important and a supply I have to have. And finally, you've probably guessed it, a Stabila All Pencil in black and or graphite. However, I would take anything water soluble, whether it's like um, the Stabila All, some um, water soluble graphite, watercolors, uh, watercolor pencil. Um, you'll see me making marks a lot in this these collage papers with water soluble different types of pencils. I love a good water soluble something that I can create marks with and then activate it with water to create those grungy layers. I'm going to choose a number six. I went back and forth. I didn't know if it was an art supply, but my sixth, if it was an art supply, it would be ephemera, especially ledger pages, old book pages, anything that's old, crumbly, water stained, looks like it has a story. It's one of my favorite supplies as well. So for question six, what is my favorite substrate to work on and why? Um, I talked about journals a little bit ago, so you know the type of journal I like. I really enjoy working in a journal partially because you can create over and over again and just have a small little book. I love to look through it and see how I've progressed over the years or 
over the project or the challenge that I'm working on. I think it's fun to hold hold a journal in your hand and look through everything. And then you don't have to worry about like a tons of canvases to hang on the wall or what to do with all the artwork in the end. You just put it on your bookshelf. Outside of a journal, I like really heavyweight mixed media paper with no tooth on it to create different mixed media layers. I have a couple of um, heavyweight index cards that I really like to create on, especially for the iCAD challenge. And I can link that information below. If I forget it, um, just ask me, I can get you those links. I love those heavyweight um, cards and they come in several different sizes. They're probably one of my favorite outside of the journal things to create on. Um, I also like creating on vintage paper. So the vintage paper on top of the mixed media paper um, is, I love creating on those as you can see in all this mark making that I'm doing and the collage papers. I'm using lots of old book pages and ledger pages. They are my favorite to create on because they automatically create a layer of interest already that I don't have to add to my journal pages. I just am able to create a second layer of interest on top of them. I especially love ledger pages, um, old pages, pieces of paper, any kind of thing like a ledger page with handwriting on it. I think it's so fun to have somebody else's handwriting, the mysteriousness of it, I guess, in mixed media. I love how mixed media is just full of layers and you look at it and you just dig um, under those layers with your eyes. So any kind of papers that I can use to create that are some of my favorites. Don't get me wrong though, I do love a good canvas. There is nothing like the satisfaction of creating on a canvas and hanging it on a wall knowing that your artwork is hanging somewhere. It is incredibly special to have that in your own home and in somebody else's home. So I do love creating on a canvas. However, I really love the solid feel of paper and journals. I love how flat they are and that I create the own texture on them instead of like the texture of the canvas or the texture of like a watercolor paper. So um, I love the solid feel of paper versus the bounciness of a canvas. I have created on some wood canvases. I cannot think of for the life of me right now what they're officially called but i think those are a lot of fun too and i would like to experiment a little bit more with that as my art practice grows Alright, the third question is, what is my go-to color palette combination or family of colors? This is another one that if you have been following me for a long time, you probably know the answer to. However, some of my answers might actually surprise you. My go-to combination of colors or color palette is definitely Payne's Gray and Walnut Ink. Yes, I love how they mix, match, mingle, and throw a little gesso in there and you just have perfection. They are the colors that I reach for when I just don't know what to do, when I want to create collage papers, when I need to kind of waken up my brain to get it going again. They're easy. I know how they're going to work. They are so comfortable to me that they are just like so easy to grab because I know the results. I know I'm going to probably most likely 99% of the time be successful with what I create with them. I hope that you're not tired of seeing Payne's Gray and Walnut Ink and gesso and old papers, but you're going to see them forever with me. However, all of that being said, I cannot create everything with Payne's Gray and Walnut Ink, can I? As much as I would love to, there are a few other tried and true go-to favorite color combinations that I reach for as well. When I studied art at the university, I fell in love with a split complementary color. One of our challenges that we had to create in my calligraphy class was a palette using a split complementary color combination. For it, I chose a purple, a red, orange, I think, and an orange. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the complement split off the top of my head, but it was a purpley color, a red color, and an orange color. And I absolutely fell in love with how those colors combine. If you have never combined purple and orange together, I highly recommend it. Throw in a little red, red-violet in there, maybe a um, 
a more red purple in there and it is just a magical combination i absolutely love playing with those colors together you wouldn't think how beautiful they are but oh my goodness the way that they just like mingle together on the page when you um, put them together and they're a little watery it's just magic I'm sure that probably surprises you since a lot of my pages tend to be a little bit more grungy that I would like bright colors, but it shouldn't surprise you that with that bright color, I love to add a little pop of fluorescent here and there. I think fluorescent orange and fluorescent pink are probably my favorites to add just a little something to my grungy layered mixed media pages. I also love a really good black and white um, color palette, really monochromatic with the shades of gray in between, then adding just a pop of color, especially a teal or one of my fluorescents. I would say black and white is probably another favorite color palette. And I just also hinted at teal. I love teals and blues, especially cobalt teal by Golden. I love um, Payne's Gray, of course, that's on the blue side of things. I think I'm more of a cool color person. However, again, my favorite, absolute favorite combination is that purple, orange, and red, which is a warm color. So in summary, Nicole just likes colors. She can do all of them, except maybe yellow. I'm not really good with yellow or a really stark red. But I love color. I love playing with color as much as my pages might suggest that I just tend to go with Payne's Gray and Walnut Ink. That's because they're what's comfortable. But I do love to play and explore with color. So were you right? Did you guess my favorite color palette? Let me know below. I'd love to know how predictable I am. Question four, how do I feel about digital kits, freebies, or otherwise, and do I use them? This was probably the easiest question for me to answer because it's no, not really, I don't really use them. I love the way old papers feel, the tactile nature of them, how they are kind of brittle, crinkle up, the water staining, just, I guess the authenticity of them. I really love how gesso mingles on the old pages and just how it looks. And I find that I don't get that as well when I print on copy paper. However, when I was on Sean Petit's creative team, she has a lot of wonderful digital images that you can print off. And I did use hers and I did enjoy that. Um, but it's just not for me. It's not how I like to use um, ephemera in my artwork. However, I think it's so great that they are available. If you're a teacher, you can print them off so your whole class has them. You can print multiples of hard to find images or papers or if you just can't locate the right image. The other thing is, is you can reprint them over and over again so you're not scared to use your stash of papers, which is great. I just find that I like to use authentic original papers. Again, I love how they feel. I love the look of them and I like how the paint interacts with them and gesso and I find that I just can't get that on copy paper, but I do appreciate they're out there. Question seven, when I work in layers, which one is my favorite? Well, first of all, I almost 99% of the time work in layers, unless I'm watercoloring. And then I guess there's a couple layers as well because I sketch and I paint and sometimes I add some like mark making to it. But generally, most of the time I do work in layers. This was really an interesting question to think about. So my first thought was the final one, the very last when it all comes together, the last layer and I'm done because the struggle is over. I don't have to think anymore. I've worked out all of the problems, either solve them or not solve them, but the page is done. So the final layer in a kind of goofy answer is my favorite. However, the caveat to that means the work is done and I have no more layers to create on, correct? So I have to start all over again. So excluding that final layer, the satisfaction of being finished, the hard work all coming together and going, ah, oh, it's done, it's finished, I created art. My favorite layer is probably the background. 
I enjoy layering those old book pages and ledger pages down with gesso, thinking through it and kind of processing where my art is going to go from there. It can kind of be stressful because sometimes I really struggle with where do I go after I've created this mess. However, there's some like, I don't know, excitement in starting a new journal page or a new piece of art, the possibility of what is and what will be and what comes next is really cool. I really enjoy creating, as you can see by this video, <laughs> collage papers, which eventually come either background pages or collage on the top of the background. I don't know saying all this that I necessarily have a favorite layer. I would almost say that the one that is going the best at the time is my favorite. Sometimes I really struggle with that background layer and the blank canvas and how to break it or the blank journal page and where to go and the anticipation and nervousness and the almost like creative, um, oh, I don't even know what to say. The word is the, like the creative turmoil that I build up inside myself with, um, with not knowing what to do sometimes, sometimes layers can be stumbling blocks. And so any layer that is like going well for me at the time is probably my favorite layer as well. With that, the opposite, my least favorite layer is like that one in between the background and the final layer. It's that messy middle if you've ever heard that saying it's that in between stage when you're either going to think of something brilliant <laughs> to create on it or you're gonna totally mess it up have to just sew over and start back at the beginning so some of those like in between layers are the absolute hardest but man what joy they bring when you get it to all come together and you think oh my gosh it worked, my idea worked, the layers came together. I went from the background, got through that messy middle and got those top layers done. And I'm actually happy with what I creative, created and what came out of my studio today. That is like an incredible thing to happen. There is so much like problem solving for me as a journal that each layer itself is just a crazy moment I think because I get inside my head on certain layers and I don't know where to go and I think why did I just do that and how do I fix it or oh my gosh Nicole that was so cool you just did something great and those moments of joy on the layers but then those moments of like turmoil that turn into joy there is so much um, incredible creativity that happens in layers so while I said in the beginning, the final one was my favorite because that meant the piece was done. I finished all the layers. It all came together or didn't come together. Sometimes I'm not super happy with them. The only problem with that final layers is that you have to start all over again and go through that joy or the expectation or the anticipation that comes in that background layer and the messy middle and the struggle that you go through to get it to where it needs to go in the end. But all of the layers come together and it is just an amazing moment as an artist when each, especially a mixed media artist, when we're dealing with so many incredible layers, when it all comes together to create a beautiful piece of art that you're proud of. I absolutely love going to art museums, looking at artwork and just staring at them at all of the layers that an artist used to create that magnific, magnific, magnificent, <laughs> I can say the word, piece of art. So the layers, all of them are my favorite because each one comes together to make that amazing mixed media piece that we all love. Magnificent. That's the word. Magnificent. So this is question number 10 and I'll be honest with you. This is the question that I submitted because I'm really, really curious to hear the nine other artists answers to this question. 
what is your biggest struggle as an artist and how do you overcome it? And with that, I specifically chose these collage papers to answer this question for, and you'll find out in a minute why. So I have three of my top biggest struggles. Now I have a lot of struggles as an artist, time management, um, having enough time in my studio, um, my messy studio, <laughs> balancing life and the things I want to do outside of the studio with the time I want to spend in the studio, social media, and the time that it takes to do YouTube and create posts and respond to people. And I love responding to people and taking that time because community is a huge part of why I create art, which I'll talk about in a minute. But balancing all of the today's needs as an artist is a really hard thing. I can't imagine like being Van Gogh or Picasso or um, Mary Cassatt or people back in the day that just got to create art and do life and not have to add the social media aspect into it and keeping up on Instagram and all of the demands of today's life that seem more complicated. I mean, just life balance as an artist is a struggle. With that, today as an artist comes some amazing challenges as well and struggles because social media and the opportunity we, opportunity that we have to share our art and share like this YouTube hop and connect with others is an incredible gift and I do not take that lightly. However, it is a struggle to balance everything. But moving on, besides those like all of those crazy struggles that we have, there are so many, but there are also so many joys and privileges that we have as an artist. My top three struggles are the following. Number one, my paintbrushes. Seriously, I struggle with remembering to empty my paint water at the end of the day, clean out my paintbrushes and not ruin them. But with that, also to put my paintbrushes into the water and not lose them on the mess of my desk to come back into my studio the next day and have them be hard as a rock. When I was thinking about my answer to this question, I knew I had to choose paintbrushes as my number one because it's lighthearted and it's funny, but I'm also sure it's something we all struggle with. I have ruined so many paintbrushes by allowing them to either soak in the water too much too many times, not get them back in the water because I'm in the midst of creating and I forget they're on my desk and I come in the next day and they're hard and it is a struggle. So how do I overcome that? Well, I recently kind of put into practice a new little thing in my studio. My studio is on the second floor of our house, which means we keep our air conditioning a little warmer up here. The lights are all off. So basically when I come into my studio, I have to open it up. I have to turn the air down. I have to open my blinds. I have to turn on all of my electrical, all of my lights and everything. So I kind of, oh, I turn on my diffuser to um, diffuse essential oils for um, inspiration and smell. And so I have this routine that I have when I come into my studio. And now I thought I need to have the same routine when I leave my studio, which I kind of did before, but recently I've added paintbrushes to it. So not only do I close down my studio by turning the AC back up, turning my diffuser off, turning off all my lights, shutting down my computer, all those things, grabbing my water that I brought up or whatever. I now remember I have to deal with my paintbrushes because my paintbrushes are a gift and I love them and I have some favorites and I have been so sad when I've ruined them because I just want to get out of the studio and get on with what I need to do next or I've been up here too late and I need to get to bed and I forget about them. So I've added cleaning my paintbrushes and taking care of them to my closing down the studio list. I still do once in a while get a paintbrush lost on my desk, find it the next day and ruin it. But one way I also help with that is I use relatively inexpensive brushes. These Simply Simmons brushes are my favorite. I love how they perform. When I do leave them in water, they generally don't swell up and get ruined only when I've done it like 20, 30, 40 times. <laughs> but generally they're inexpensive. I love how they perform. I love how they've held up with my paint and my abuse over the years. 
So my biggest two struggles, not as kind of goofy as my paintbrushes, are repetition and inspiration. And they kind of go hand in hand, so I'm gonna talk about them kind of together, but explain them both first. So repetition, feeling like I am creating the same things over and over again. For example, the Payne's Gray and the Walnut Ink that you currently see on the screen that I'm creating these collage papers with, which is why I chose um, this segment for this question. I think I struggle with feeling like I'm not an artist sometimes when I create with the same colors over and over again or the same ideas or the same technique and I don't know why. There's no reason that that, that should be. I mean, Monet painted haystacks how many times over and over again and they hang in the museums. Not that my collage paper <laughs> should be in a museum. but. It is a tried and true thing for an artist to create some of the same images and some of the same subject matters and the same colors and Picasso had a blue period. So it's no different that I have this same issue or struggle, but for some reason I think it makes me feel inauthentic as an artist and not um, creative or that I didn't have new ideas, but I need to twist that and overcome that and think that, that I may be good at these color combinations or that these bring me joy so why not do things that I love and create and through those maybe other inspirations will come from them or I'll find new ways to use them or I don't know what's wrong with repetition for some reason it's a huge struggle and stumbling block for me and with that comes the inspiration to do something new so repetition and then inspiration to find something new I think part of it is because I want every little square on my Instagram to be different and to inspire other people and not be like, oh, there's Nicole using that Payne's Gray and Walnut Ink again. But does it really matter as long as we're creating? So while I struggle with repetition and being inspired to do something new, how do I overcome it? I don't know. I wish I had the answers. I think just creating as often as I can, getting into my studio and having fun and not worrying it so much is how I overcome them and maybe getting my in my studio a little bit more often will help me clean up those paintbrushes a little bit more often and I'll help with all three of those struggles what do you think what are your struggles I'd love to hear from you below So question eight is, does where you live and grew up have any influence on your art? I thought this was a really interesting question and something I've never thought about before. To give you a little bit of my background, I grew up in the Midwest. I lived in Minnesota and then moved to Iowa when I was in high school. And then I attended college in Iowa at Iowa State University. I also had a really unique opportunity to travel a lot in my elementary, early junior high years with my dad as he chaperoned high school kids on trips. I also had another wonderful, amazing opportunity to travel. Well, I guess not only travel, but live in Russia twice. When I was in college, I moved to Texas and I have been here, oh, 20 some years now. So while I grew up in the Midwest for a huge part of my life and the last part of my life I've been in Texas, I don't really think the places necessarily have had a huge influence on my art. This really got me thinking about what has influenced my art. Have these places influenced my art and I'm just not realizing it? I was thinking about other artists and realizing um, how places have influenced the masters and people in the past. I know some um, current artists who paint um, mostly oceans or seascapes because of where they live or people that really do city art because they're in the cities. I can see how where people are, where they grew up, where they live does influence art, but I just don't see that in my artwork. So my simple answer is no, I don't think living in Texas, growing up in the Midwest has had a huge influence on my art. However, <laughs> what has influenced my art? If it's not the places I've lived, what is it? And I would say, I think it's more of my life experiences. 
I don't think my art would be any different if these experiences had happened in other places. I think it's what I've done in these places or what um, I've experienced or where I've worked or where I've um, spent time or the places I've gone or the vacations I've had. I think just life in general has influenced my artwork. As I got to think about it a little bit more, I think that if I had to choose places that had an influence on my art, I would say living in Russia and then moving to Houston. But I think it's mostly because these were both moments in my life when I struck out on my own, when I became independent, when I started to pursue the things that I wanted to do and enjoy in life. Those moments in time kind of set the stage for the life that I wanted to create as an adult. Wherever I go, live, vacation, travel to, spend time at, I love to find places to explore, to find inspiration. I think my art is a culmination of those moments in my life. For instance, when I went to Russia, I loved going to the museums, to experiencing the art. I loved walking around in the gardens and enjoying um, the culture and life there and seeing the colors and the people and the inspiration. Moving to Texas outside of the Midwest, the same thing. I loved going to the museums, heading to the beach, which was only an hour away. Um, just different life experiences have um, allowed me to find beauty in the everyday. I think also with that, I've been able to figure out what I am not and what I don't like and actually who I am. For the last 10 or so years, I've been on a new journey in life, just experiencing life and doing things and um, gardening and working on my house and having fun. And I think that while places, to answer the question, have not had an influence on my art, it's the things that I have done, the experiences that I've had, the beauty I've seen or not seen. Um, just living life, no matter where it is, has what, ex what um, influences my artwork. I am so thankful for life's experiences and I look forward to continuing to travel and experience life and finding more beauty in the everyday to influence my artwork. Question number one is, what in my artistic career has given me the most joy? Before I give you my answer, I first want to 100% say that these are not to brag at all. I encourage you in your art to have goals that when you reach those goals or those milestones or the incredible things happen, they are amazing and they should be shouted from the rooftops not to brag but also to encourage others that it can happen that um, amazing things happen when you put your artwork out there and those are the things that i want to celebrate in my answer i have a quote in my art studio on the wall that says keep some room in your heart for the unimaginable and that quote is by mary oliver this quote kind of is maybe a theme to my artwork or my art practice or my art um, business, so to speak. I want to be open to what comes next, to what opportunities are out there and where my creativity takes me. I've been art journaling for a really long time and also an artist for a really long time. I began in high school, studied in college, kind of lost track of art for a while, but found mixed media again back 
I don't know, 2015, 2013, somewhere in there. I don't even remember. But I was watching all of the other artists and things that were happening, the design teams that were out there, and people recording themselves and doing blogs and thought, oh, I could do that and I would love to do that. I didn't have a camera or a YouTube channel. Well, I had a normal camera, but like a video camera or a YouTube channel or a website or a blog, but knew that this was something I could do. So I applied to my first design team with nothing to show them other than some of my art. And of course I wasn't chosen because even though in my heart this was something I knew I could do, I didn't have any proof to show them. So I kept creating, taking classes, putting some of my artwork out there on Instagram, and just being an artist. Years later, this same design team contacted me and asked me if I wanted to be part of it. So in 2017, I began my YouTube channel, worked on a website, started a new Instagram account just for my art, and was on my first design team. That is probably one of the things that brought me the most joy. Since then, I've been on eight total design teams, had several guest artist spots, and when the latest design team asked me to um, be a guest artist before I applied for it, it was another moment of joy because I had applied for this design team years back and didn't make it. And as disappointed as I was, my body of work just wasn't there. So I kept working and working and practicing and honing my craft and finding out who I am and repeating the same artwork over and over again. But eventually I was on that design team and that brought me so much joy as well. The second moment that brought me the most joy was when a lady sent me a message on Facebook telling me how much my art had inspired her. She used my art in my tutorials to create an art journal to give to her kids knowing that her life expectancy wasn't long with her battle with cancer. This moment brought me incredible joy to know that what I was doing was making an impact on another person's life. While she is no longer here, I am so proud and excited and overjoyed that she has artwork that she created from my art tutorials that her family gets to enjoy today. When she sent me those messages, I knew that I was on the right path, creating art and sharing it with others. The friendships that I've made and the people that I've inspired, especially Christy, my sweet friend who I met because of my art journals, bring me so much joy. And with that, all of you who have followed me and supported me for years now bring me so much incredible joy and have helped me to reach milestones on Instagram and YouTube that are just incredible to me. I never thought in a million years I'd be able to monetize my YouTube channel or have a couple thousand followers and for that I am incredibly thankful. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, the most recent moment that has brought me the absolute most joy was when Stampington's Art Journaling Magazine chose my artwork to be on the cover. I have long been an admirer of the Stampington magazines. Back when I made cards, I had several cards in Take 10 and Stamper's Sampler and the Ketchup Issue and one little piece of my card was on a cover once and I thought someday I'd love for a whole piece of my artwork to be on the cover. I used to go to the bookstore, grab a coffee, and look at the magazines because I just couldn't afford to subscribe to all of them. They were all incredible, and how do you even choose? Well, several months ago, when Art Journaling Magazine reached out to me and asked me if I would write an article, of course I said yes. I used to look at Art Journaling Magazine back in the day when I was first starting and thought about how cool it would be someday if my artwork could be in Art Journaling. I kept journaling and plugging away and creating art and when they reached out to me it was an amazing moment. And then several weeks later or however long it was when I saw that not only one piece of my artwork but two of them were being voted on to be on the front co cover of art journaling I absolutely could not believe it and was floored.
With my moments of joy, I want to encourage you to keep creating art, to have goals, and to keep some room in your heart for the unimaginable because you never know who your art will touch, where you'll go from there, and just the incredible, um, amazing opportunities that you're, you'll have just because you love to create. So the answers to my last question kind of lead into question number five. What motivates you to create art or what is the why behind your art? I discovered my love for art and creating in high school. I had an amazing art teacher who I found out years later wrote me a note when I graduated that I completely forgot about. In my high school graduation card, she wrote, photography and painting can both be a lifetime of enjoyment for you and part of a career choice too. I had completely forgotten that she had written that to me until I ran across her card several years ago. It was definitely one of those cool moments to realize that perhaps I really am on the right path in my pursuit of an art career. While I studied art and design in college, I had several careers afterwards. I never really thought at the time how art would be part of my adult life. I fell in love with mixed media in college, but never really pursued much with it once I was married other than, you know, the traditional scrapbooking that we all did. And then I got into some card making and then I found mixed media and art journaling and thought, where has this been and why haven't I been doing this? I rekindled my love for mixed media through art journaling and I haven't looked back. I didn't realize until maybe 10, 15 years ago, this need I had to create, which has morphed into my garden, my yard, my house, decorating, and mixed media art. I knew I loved to create. I knew I loved art. In fact, I majored in it in college, but I didn't ever realize why or what my why, my purpose was going to be behind it. I never thought about it. So today, what really motivates me to create art and what is the why behind it? I think today art brings connection and community. As I mentioned before, inspiring others is a huge part of the joy that art brings to me. However, I also love the challenge, the creative problem solving in all forms of art, from my garden to cooking to decorating to my journal to the canvas. I love seeing the beauty in the everyday and to be able to replicate that on canvas and create things on my own is just an incredible gift. Several years after we were married, I left my full-time job and started, on, started working on a part-time job. When that job kind of stopped and no longer had a part-time job, I decided that I wanted to pursue art and I am so thankful to have the privilege to be able to work on my art and be a, be a housewife full-time. It was after that decision that I ran across my art teacher's card and it was true confirmation that I was on the right path. I am happiest when I'm creating, when I'm sharing my art with others. Picasso has a quote that I love that says, art washes away the dust from life. And for me, art does that. When I am in my studio creating, listening to my favorite music, looking at the trees outside in the sunshine, if there's sunshine, I truly am forgetting about everyday life and the problems and the worries and the stress and everything that's out there. Art is just an amazing gift that I, that I have been given and you have been given to, to um, have therapy, to, to get all your things out on the art journal and to just create. I don't really have a concrete answer on the motivation or the why other than I just have to create. I enjoy it so much. I love being an artist. I love creating art. And I know we all go through times when we're like, oh, I have no inspiration. I'm not an artist. Why am I doing this? For me, I think, why don't I just get a job and not do this anymore? Because art can be stressful sometimes, but it truly is a gift. On top of that, that I get to connect with you, people all over the world and other countries that speak other languages, the um, comments that I get from people that they have 
tried the technique or my page or have been inspired by something I've done, the incredible honor I've had to be on design teams, to be a guest artist is just amazing. And I just love this artist community and being part of it. I have past experiences in graphic design and layout, photography, fine art, editing. I love problem solving through creative ways to create art and that is probably a huge part of what motivates me that in inspiring others. It is an absolute joy to me and an honor when someone is inspired not only just inspired, but has confidence to create and that they have the ability to create because of a tutorial or something I did. I absolutely love encouraging others to create and use art, not just as a hobby or something that they do, but a part of your self care or your therapy. I truly aim to live a life filled with art from spending time in my garden to museums, to decorating my home, to shopping for unique artsy treasures, spending time with other artists and creating in my studio. It means the world to me when you leave comments, when you like my posts, when you go out and buy Art Journaling Magazine just because I'm on the cover. I am truly, truly incredibly thankful for your support and the encouragement that you give me as an artist and oftentimes they are when I need them the most. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this whole video to the end, to supporting me, to encouraging me in my art. You truly are what motivates me. Just when I think I should throw in the towel after several months of disappearing unplanned just because I was sad and needed to be outside in my garden after losing our gray kitty, you guys were there to tell me you missed me and how much you love my art and i am so so thankful for you if you made it to the end of my 10 questions congratulations <laughs> thank you so much for listening i hope that you also were inspired and created some collage papers with me i'm going to flip through mine here at the end but also show you my palettes one reason i use book pages for my palettes is because it creates additional collage papers As I said over and over again, I absolutely love inspiring you to create. If you have any questions on the process or anything that I created or additional clarification from things I said, be sure to leave those below. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Be sure to check out all of the other artists. The complete hop list will be linked below as well as your next stop will be below and at the end of this video. Thank you again so much for all of your encouragement, support, watching my videos, your likes, your comments. It all truly, truly means the world to me.